as you know, I was doing uh, a, a series on lunch out, and then we had our anniversary service last week. So I go back uh, to my series. This is part two of lunch out. It's part of our theme of gathering to launch out into the deep and cast our nets or let down our nets. And part two, the subtitle is Let Down Your Nets. We've taken a look at the encounter between the Lord Jesus and Peter on the shores of Lake Gennesaret and, and we saw God uh, or the Lord Jesus Christ telling Peter to launch out. And as we said two weeks ago, uh, he told him to do that twice. First, to move away from the land, and then secondly, to launch out into the deep. Launching out in any endeavor, especially when we are doing what God wants us to do, and we want to do big things for the Lord, or great things for the Lord, will place demand on us. It's not easy to do new things. It's not easy to do bold things. It's not even easy to obey God because any time we determine to obey God, we are launching out. And in most cases, we are launching out into the deep from the place where we are comfortable into the new place where God wants us to be. And I trust that in this series, God will use it to inspire you, to encourage you, to step out boldly to do the things that God wants you to do. You will not be intimidated by past failure. You will not be intimidated by everything happening around you. You're going to be motivated and inspired by the word of the Lord to launch out and do great things for the Lord. Luke chapter 5, and that's what we've been looking at. And we will look at verses 3 and 4. Luke chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. I'm always impressed when I read the Bible to see the depth of God's word and, and, and what, how it speaks to us at various levels. And this instruction that Jesus gave to Peter uh, is an instruction that speaks to us today. And I want you to note three important elements in this passage that will help us to uh, position it in a way that affects us, that ministers to us, and that speaks to us. There are three important elements I want you to pay attention to. The first is the deep. That's where Jesus told Peter to launch out, to launch out to the deep. The deep is the place where the fish are. So when he said, launch out to the deep, he was talking about the place where the fish are. For everything we are doing, it is important that we launch out into the right place. It's possible to be bold and confident and launch out doing something, but do it in the wrong place. Obviously, the Peter and his crew have been working all night and have not been successful Hard work is not really a guarantee of success. It's an ingredient, but not a guarantee. Jesus says, launch out into the deep. The deep is a place where God has already prepared a harvest for you to gather. Launch out into the deep. There is a place prepared for you. There is a place God wants you to get to. There is a place where God's provision is waiting to encounter you. Sometimes you can be in scarcity so much that you forget that God has a prepared place of abundance for you. That place is where I, what I call the deep. And that's what Jesus told Peter, launch out into the deep. Now many times when we read the Bible, 
we read the words, we don't see the actions. So, we read the Gospels and it says, Jesus says this, but we don't know whether when he said it, he was frowning, he was smiling, uh, how was his hand moving? The, the, we don't normally see that. All we hear is the word. So, it doesn't always help us to pitch up properly what is happening. So, is it possible, and I'm just saying, is it possible that when Jesus said, launch out into the deep, his hands were not stiff by his side? Is it possible? It's possible. Because if I was talking and I was telling somebody, launch out to the deep, my hands would not be by my side. Especially if I'm on a boat in the sea, I would not say, launch out to the deep, like an army commander. Launch out to the deep. Now, most likely, if I say, launch out to the deep, I will indicate where the deep is. Is that not so? So, can you imagine when Jesus said, launch out in the, into the deep, he also pointed to where the deep is. Because there is a lot of deep in the sea, but there is a particular deep in the sea that you must launch out to. So, here we see Jesus is not just uh, talking about a vague deep, but I believe he is also talking about a specific place, a specific spot where you have to get to in order to find the supply that he has for you. The deep is the place where God has prepared your abundance. No matter what you're struggling with, there is a deep place God wants you to get to. And in that place, there is fish. So that's the first element I want you to note about this verse. There is a place prepared for you. It's called the deep. The second element I want you to note about in this whole story is the boat. The boat is what is going to take Peter and his crew to the deep where the fish are. So it, it's possible to know where the deep is, but you have to have the vehicle that transports you to that place. It's possible to know that God has a blessing for you with your name on it. God will do great things for you. But do you have what it takes to get to the place that God wants us to be? Because many times in life, you know, we can, we can have a deep sense of our destiny. We know God wants to do great things for us. We know we're going to do great things. We know our lives are going to amount to much. But we don't know how to get there. How am I going to be that person? How am I going to achieve that? And that's where the boat comes in. The boat is the mechanism that is prepared to take you to that place. So that's the second element I want you to know. There is a place you must be. There is a system that must take you there. And the third element I want you to pay attention to is the net. The net is what catches and holds the fish. Without the net, the boat would have been in the deep and still not catch anything. A boat does not catch fish. It only takes you to where the fish are. In the place where the fish are, Jesus told Peter, let down your nets. And we're going to look at that very shortly. So the net is the tool for gathering in what the Lord has provided for you it's like your basket it is the container that gathers and holds what you have caught so i want you to watch these three things the deep the place where you have to be the boat the thing that takes you there and the net the thing that helps you to take what is in the deep now can you imagine if you have a boat and you are in the deep but you have no net or you have a net but you have no boat to get you to the deep. Or you know where the deep is, but you don't know how to get there. Or you have a boat, but you don't know where the deep is. So all these three must work for you. You must know where the deep is. You must have the mechanism, the boat to take you there. And you must have the net to take advantage of the place that God has given to you. Now, for each one of us, for us to achieve and to do the things that God wants us to do, these three elements must come together. And that's what I see in this story. All these three are working together. But they are all working together because of Jesus. 
Because of Jesus. I mean, if Jesus was not part of this equation, Peter still has a boat. He still has a net. He still knows the sea. But the three are not together. The three are not working to his advantage. And the only thing that makes all the three work to our advantage is Jesus Christ. When the Lord comes into the picture, he makes everything meaningful in our lives. He makes the pieces work together for us. So the question is, when Jesus is telling Peter, launch out into the deep, let down your nets for a catch, where was Jesus? Jesus was in the boat with Peter. He went fishing together with Peter on the boat. He entered the boat. He sat in the boat. He preached in the boat. And he never got off the boat. So Jesus is not standing at the shore giving instructions. He's in the boat with Peter. He's in the vessel with Peter. He's in the vehicle with Peter. And when he comes into your boat, then the boat, the deep, and the net will work together to your advantage. But if he's not in the boat with you, you may have a net, you have a boat, you know the deep, but they are all disconnected. Jesus brings the connections together. He brings the pieces together. He aligns the pieces of our lives. You know, many times we look at our lives and we have everything it takes to be successful. You are tall if you are a man. You are handsome. You are a man. That's a very big advantage in the world. Because tall and handsome gives you a lot of leverage. Once in a while, not tall, and handsome also does well, but tall and handsome is very good. You have a good education. You come from a good family. You are located in a good business. You have a good wife. Everything seems to work to your advantage, but the pieces are not together. Or you may be slim and beautiful. Slim and beautiful is nice for the women. There are a few that are exemptions to this rule. But normally everybody is looking for slim and beautiful. Even the not slim and beautiful are looking to be slim and beautiful. You have a good education. You marry. You're working in the right place. Everything seems to be okay. But the okay is not okay. Because somebody needs to come into your life, into your boat, into your situation and put the boat and the deep and the net together to form a purpose. It's not so much about what you have achieved by yourself, it's how much you allow Jesus space into your life. And remember, the boat was Peter's business. That was the tool of his business and he allowed Jesus to partner with him. You know, many times we are Christians. Jesus is not, is in our hearts, but he's not in our boat. We don't allow him space to tell us what to do. We, we just want to do things by ourselves. We say, Lord Jesus, stay in our hearts, but don't tell us how to run our business. Because sometimes when you tell people, you know, you are a Christian, run your business this way. They say, Pastor, business is not church. Oh, business is not church. If you do it the way, church way, it won't work. If you do it the Bible way, it won't work. This, this is business, it's not Bible. But Peter did not say, Lord Jesus, this is business, it's not Bible. He allowed Jesus room in his boat. If you're going to make room for him in your enterprise, in your career, in your profession, and not see him as an outsider and an intruder in what you're doing, then he can make the deep, the boat, and the net work together for you. That's what the Christian life is. We allow Jesus to come into our lives, but not only into our lives, into what we do, into our business as well. So he went fishing together with Peter. I want you to pay attention to what he says. Let 
down your net for a catch. Let down your net. It's a very interesting observation here. You don't get it easily in the English translation, but in the Greek, you get it a bit better. Because Greek verbs are, are plural or singular, and the actions that are taken can be singular or plural. And when you read this in the Greek, when Jesus said, launch out, launch out, the verb he uses is singular. Singular. That means that he was talking to one person. Launch out. One person. When he said, let down your nets. That's why the English has the nets as plural. It's not just many nets, but the verb is plural. And what does that mean? Singular and plural. It means when he says launch out, he said one man. One man can launch out. But when he said let down your nets, he said a group of you must let down the nets. In other words, it is easy for one man to launch out doing something, but it takes a team to ensure that what is done becomes successful. You as an individual can launch out. But you can't do everything all by yourself. When it comes to deploying your net so that you can have a catch, you're going to need help. And if you are a person who cannot tolerate anybody or work with anybody, then you'll be a good launcher, but not a good catcher. If you're going to be a good launcher and a good launch, a catcher, you have to learn when to do things by yourself and when to get other people to team up with you to get it done launch out your nets uh, let down your nets for a catch what does it mean to let down let me quickly go through this first it means to losing the net losing the net what does that mean disentangle the net and if any one of you knows about net when you put net together pretty soon it gets entangled and so jesus says let down your nets the first implication is losing the net up. If it's entangled, it's all mixed up, it's not going to catch anything. The system you're going to use to bring up the fish, you have to loosen it. Let down your net, loosen it up. Secondly, it means lower it. If the net is in a boat, it is higher than the fish. It's not going to catch any fish. If it's going to catch fish, it has to go to fish level. And the fish level is not boat level. Boat level is human level. Fish level is down. And for the net to get to the fish, it has to be weighed down. In Ghana, I think they use lead to weigh down the net so when it hits the water, it doesn't stay on top of the water, it goes deep. The weight takes it down but it is in when it goes down weighed down that it encounters the fish and there are important lessons we can learn from that sometimes God is going to put weights on you to take you to levels you don't want to get to but it is that weight that takes you down makes you feel your life is going down and down and down and down is that which engages you in your destiny so you can find the right things that God wants you to have. Not every weight is a bad weight. Not everything that takes you down is bad. Sometimes God has to take you down in order for you to find what you're looking for. If you're as one of those people who always wants to be up, you want to be up, you want to be above everybody, you want to be the boss, you want to be superior, you want to be whatever, and especially in this part of the, uh, of the world, we accumulate up titles. Never get down to work. Never get down to engage. So the fish are at one level. You are at another level. You have the net, but the net is not at a fish level. You can't sit in your office and do all the research. That's boat. 
Go to the market and engage the people and find out what is happening. That's the net going down to the deep. The same with the pastor, same with everybody. Same with the president, same with the politician. If you just stay up there thinking you know everything, don't go down with a net to find what the fish are going through. You have a nice net, but doesn't catch anything. Because the net has to be humble to be weighed down to go to the level of the fish. God has a prepared place for you, but if you're staying high above it, high and mighty, you never get there. You never get there. Your destiny really is not up there, it's down. What you're looking for is not up, it's down. And we have to learn to go down. So that's what it means to lose your nest. Uh, let down your nest. Losing it, lower it. And Jesus promised that if you do that, you're going to have success. He calls it a catch. A catch. That is God's word of promise. That if you do what I'm saying, you're going to catch something. A catch is to pursue and capture something. Jesus said to Peter, your boat will not em come empty. Your net will not return empty. Last night you were empty, but today you're going to have a catch. I don't know about you, but I received that word of prophecy over my life. And I said, today I will have a catch. This month I will have a catch. This year I will have a catch. I will not fish for empty things. I'm going to go to the deep. My nets will be down and I'm going to catch something. Somebody say, I'm going to catch something. Oh, say it like you believe it. Say, I'm going to catch something. I'm going to pursue it, and I'm going to catch it. Jesus is literally telling Peter, your effort will not be wasted. It will not be a wasted day. It will not be a wasted week. It will not be a wasted month. It will not be a wasted year. 2023, you will come up with a catch you will not be wasted. It's not going to be wasted. And a catch is not just that you catch something. A catch also means you're going to have it in abundance. You're going to have it in abundance. You're going to have multitudes. You're going to have a lot of it. That's what Jesus is telling Peter. You're going to have it in abundance. I don't know about you, but I believe God is telling somebody you're going to have a catch. When we say 2023 is a year of gathering, it also means in 2023, you're going to have a catch. Somebody say, I'm going to have a catch. So say, I'm going to have it in abundance. I'm going to have a lot of it. But all of that happens because Jesus comes into the boat. And when he comes into the boat, he takes the same boat that failed last night. He takes the same net that went and came empty last night. He takes the same sea that produced nothing, but he brings it all together in a new dimension. The elements are the same. The same boat, same water, same Lake Gennesaret, same net. The difference is is a new passenger in the boat his name is Jesus he changes the equation of our lives he makes what was frustrating and a failure to be successful let's bow down our heads today we just want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ you know for many of us our lives are like Peter and his boat we feel that we've been toiling, we've been working hard. We've been working so hard, but nothing seems to be working. The water, the sea is not producing for us. Our nets are empty, our boats are empty. But this morning we want to say, Lord Jesus, come into my boat. Come into my business. Show me where the deep is. Show me where the fish are. Show me what to do. Help my net to find the right fish. Just begin to talk to the Lord. Because you want to invite him into the boat. Thank you, Lord.
Lord Jesus. Speak to him from your heart. And I just want to pray for everyone here who feels I have a boat, but it's not, it doesn't seem to be in the right place. I'm not, I just seem, I, I'm not finding the thing I'm looking for. I'm casting my net, but it's not catching fish. It's not catching. It's, it's just, it's effort, but it's not working. I'm on the sea, but I don't even know the right location of the sea I'm, I must be in. It's vast water. If that's your desire, you say, Lord Jesus, come into my boat, direct me. I just want to pray with you. Maybe it may be your business or your marriage or some other area of your life. And you just feel that you need to see God's hand of favor and prosperity over your life. Just stand with me as we pray. Stand with me as we pray, as we talk to the Lord. If you are in that category, not everybody, but you're in that category, and you say, Lord, I, I need to find the fish. I, I need to see. I need you in my boat. Put your hand on your heart as we pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. We can go back to your word, go back to scripture, and we can see Jesus at work. We hear his words. We see the results. And he never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we come to you, living Jesus. You who instructed Peter and made his boat full of fish. We come to you today, Lord, help us to be positioned in the right place, the right deep place. Help us, Lord, in this vast sea to find the right spot we have to be, Lord. Help us, Lord, for our nets not to return empty but to return full lord for our lives for our businesses for our homes for our churches for everything we are doing lord we trust you that you will cause us to excel to increase to abound that we will begin to see you participating in our lives participating in our efforts lord let all the pieces come together let all things work together for our good. We trust you, Lord, for a catch, for a season of a catch. And let March be a season of a catch for us, Lord. Let our nets catch fish in March. Souls for your kingdom, substance for your kingdom, souls for your kingdom, substance for your kingdom, Lord. And we receive your command in our boats this month in Jesus name Amen and Amen. Give the Lord praise somebody Hallelujah whatever you are desiring and some of you are desiring the fruit of the womb that God will give you a child you will catch something this month whatever it is you are desiring to catch you will catch it because Christ Jesus when he comes into the boat he takes what was fruitless and makes it fruitful in his name, amen.